20. We've been here before, man. Y'all know what's up. Right now. Right now. Every person looking themselves in the mirror and hold themselves accountable. Let's continue to grow. An absolute dime. Caught for the touchdown. He spoils his way into the end zone. He electrifies. Here comes the pressure. What a beautiful thing to watch. Yes! Freaking love this. I love him. Good day. What's going on, everyone? Welcome into First Take on this beautiful I Thursday. I can already see. It. I in can New already York see. City, Kimberly A. Martin, Dan Orlovsky, <laughs> Stephen A. I'm Yo. Holly. Steve. What's up? Today's a big day for What's you. What's up? Throwing out the first pitch, yeah, Yankee yeah, Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First Playing ever? the Blue Jays. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Listen, man. Would little Steve have ever dreamt of this moment? I don't oh, know. Oh, no. no. Please I don't. Thought we were, I don't know. know. No, but, 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 but I would tell you this. You know, listen, listen. I, I would have never. I've been, a, I've been a diehard Yankee fan my entire life. Here's the thing. Being born in the Bronx but raised in Queens, New York, since I was one years old, my father... God rest his soul, never allowed us to watch a Mets game mm. until I turned 18. So we in Queens, Shea Stadium, where the Mets used to play yeah. before they built City Field. I'm 10 minutes from Shea Stadium. You got to pass Shea Stadium on the Grand Central Parkway, all right, to go to Yankee Stadium. And we were still, we were never even allowed to watch the Mets until 1986 when they won the World Series. That's the first time I ever saw a Mets game on television. That's how diehard of a Yankee fan my family has been. And now a lot I get riding to throw out the first pitch. You know, I'm trying to be too We're going to have to change that grip. Just gotta change I've that decided, grip. Yeah, I haven't decided, I decided I don't know whether I'm going to throw a slider I'm going to throw a fat. I haven't decided. Not, okay. I haven't decided Listen, yet. Oh, I haven't decided yet. Don't do too much. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm Knuckleball. I, I can't do the knuckleball. Do you, ever see the, do you ever see the movie Hitch? Of course. Yeah, when he says to Will Smith, like, this is you. Yes. You're here. Hold on, no, 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 no. You're here. See, that's exactly. That's you. No, 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 no. You're right here. So, so, so you're you don't right got here. it right. Let's First of all, you don't have it right, Molly. <laughs> but he did like this. What, what Will Smith playing Hitch did to Kevin James, my man. Yeah. He was like this. Don't do all of this. All of this. He said, no, stay right here. No, it wasn't that. He said, no, okay. he said, don't move. Okay, he said, stay in your place. That that's what he was saying, yeah, like that. Good. You just added that. I do not do too too much, much out there. No, he do didn't. Not. It was just you know, a little two steps. You know, if you if you were a true Yankee fan, what you would throw? What? You would throw a cutter in honor of Mariana yeah, Rivera. Would. No. Yes. A true Yankee yes. fan. A true Yankee fan wears Derek Jeter's jersey. I was going to say, what's the okay. fit going to be? That's right. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. El Capitan. No, I got it. I got, got it. I know we got a show to do, but, but but you have to understand, Derek Jeter's my man. I love him dearly. You know, I got to call him, let him know. Oh, I, I waited till the day to, to, to tell I Derek Jeter. I got to call him. Derek Jeter and let him know. I'm throwing out the first pitch. Now, I know what you're going to say to me. The Don't name, F this up. The name dropping is It, it is Derek Jeter. exquisite. Derek Jeter. No. Yeah. Derek Jeter. You want to say Denzel oh, Washington, Washington, too? Should we spend the whole A block on this? Commercial? I'm just wondering. We haven't, we haven't, you know, we, 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 we haven't, we haven't spoken. To, yeah, I, I got, I got to call Jay Denzel, too. I call him, oh, okay. his people call my people. Yeah. You, you want to mention anyone else or just? Antoine Fuqua. How about that? Let's do that. Wow. Let's go. Let's name every Let's celebrity we have Chris Rock. Chris Rock. <laughs> it's no secret. Uh, we're going to Chi Town, guys. We're transitioning. It's no secret things have not been going well uh, in Chicago for Justin Fields and the Bears. After an offseason full of promise, they're winless. Here's Fields on those struggles. I felt like, you know, I wasn't necessarily playing my game. I uh, felt like I was kind of robotic and, you know, not just not, not, not playing like myself. So um, my goal this week is just to say effort and just go out there and play football how I know how to play football. And um, that includes uh, thinking less and just going out there and playing off of instincts. What do you think was causing you to think so much, maybe think too much? Um, you know, could be, uh, you know, uh, coaching, um, I think. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it makes it, you know, uh, they're doing their job when they're giving me, you know, what to look at and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I you know, can't be thinking about that when the game comes. I prepare myself throughout the week, and then when the game comes, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's time to play free at that point. So, um, you know, just thinking less and, you know, playing more. 
All right, strong sound right there. Appears to be a change of heart post-practice from Fields, though, hosting an impromptu media session in the locker room. Take a listen. I'm not blaming anything on the coaches. I'm never going to blame anything on the coaches, never going to blame anything on my teammates. I will take every, whatever happens in the game, I will take all the blame. I don't care if it's a drop pass, it should have been a pass. Put it on me. But never will you hear anything come out of my mouth to where I will blame it on somebody else in this organization, my teammates, never will you hear that. So I just want to clear that up and just know that, like, I need to play better. That's it, point blank. Dan, you're up first, our quarterback. Do you think Fields and the Bears uh, should be heading towards a breakup? Should be right now, no. But <clears throat> this has been a very difficult stretch and, and surprising stretch in the first two weeks of the year. So Justin Fields last year in the last 10 weeks of the season with the same coaching staff and lesser people around him ran for like 100 yards a game. They utilized him four times a game when it came to designed quarterback runs, excluding scrambles, okay? Then they had DJ Moore, and it's like, here we go. We're about, to, we're about to take off. Same people around him. And then the season starts, and through two weeks, Justin Fields has been designed run five times. Inexcusable. That's 100% coaching. That is not on the player. Um, th this is a football team that defensively has given up 25 points in 12 straight games. That has nothing to do with Justin Fields' performance. This is an offense that has had 22 drives this year. 14 of them either have a penalty or a sack on them. You have no chance to be good. So does Justin Fields have to play better under his own kind of control 100%? But when I watch him play, I, I watch a player that has zero confidence. I watch a player right now that doesn't trust or, or refuses to believe in what his eyes are telling him. And then when he hear and I watch that press conference, I see a guy that's not having fun playing football at all. And then tries to rectify some comments by saying, I, I, I wouldn't blame anybody, but he did. Mm -hmm. And my thing is this. I don't care what the situation is. As a quarterback in the NFL, you never blame your teammates. You never blame your coaches. The challenge for them right now is, after everything that I just told you about kind of where the team is, they're playing the defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Their defensive coordinator just resigned. Yesterday, the quarterback, whether it's a slip up or not, blamed part of his lack of performance on coaching and then that is to try to kind of put it back into the bottle when it comes to or the tube when it comes to this comment. So it's too early to say, yes, they have to break up. I think what has to happen is the coaching staff needs to look at Justin and say, instead of what do we do to help you play and make you successful, it has to be what do we not do to help you play poorly? Like, what, what can you not do right now and then rectify it or build the offense around allowing him to play to his absolute best? Stephen A., Kimberly, and, and Molly, I kind of use the analogy like this. Imagine if the Gr Memphis Grizzlies went to John Morant and be like, hey, you cannot go to the rim. Is he still ultra talented? Absolutely. But is he the best version of himself? No. And I think that's a little bit of what's happening right now. So I'm not ready to say, like, they have to break up because I've watched this coaching staff use him in the proper way. But it has to change, and it has to change quickly, both from the what we're trying to do stance and also just in, in his own words, and it's true, has to play better. Great analogy. It, it is – it's far too early because it's only been two games. Um, but – I didn't want, this is exactly why I didn't want, to, want Justin Fields to go to Chicago. The, what's happening right now is because you take a prospect like Justin Fields, you knew, you knew the Bears organization was going to be in turmoil. It was going to be in flux. You knew that Ryan Pace, Matt Nagy were not going to last. Yet they were allowed to remain in those positions and drafted Justin Fields. Then they were gone after that first season. Now a new coaching staff is brought in. And this is the first time Justin Fields has been in the same system in back-to-back -back seasons since college. Um, it's too early because if you are not happy, Daniel, if you're not happy with this quarterback, if you don't think you can win with this quarterback, why do we trade away the number one overall pick? Why do we give that up? Like, the, the moves don't make sense together. That's a good point. And so I don't – but my fear is the same as yours. I fear – I don't know where this is headed, but I don't like where it's headed. Because not just calling out your coaches. I think as a player, 
right or wrong, once you start looking at the media and calling them out and saying, oh, you guys are trying to twist my words when the media is literally just writing what you're saying or tweeting what you're saying, like it just, it just ends up being not a good situation. And I think Justin needed to be at a franchise where from day one, we see whether it's your deficiencies, you're a rookie, we see the deficiencies, we see the skill set, we see what's unique to your ability, and we will develop you. We will put you in a position to succeed. We will put a lid on your plate to start, and we will gradually increase it to the end result is so that we maximize your potential. And that to me was why the Bears never made sense for Justin Fields, because you could see that, co that coaching staff and that front office was not gonna be intact beyond, beyond that, season, that first season. And what's transpired was my greatest fear. And I really truly wish he hadn't gone there because now it just seems like a mess and we're only in week three and they're about to play the Chiefs. If this game gets out of hand, after Justin says it's coaching, after we're looking at this organization, we're wondering why isn't he put in situations to be better? Why is Justin holding on to the ball too long? Why does it look like his head is spinning? I think it's going to get ugly very quickly, Stephen. Y'all just took up 12 minutes of our lives that we can't. Oh, no, I know Mr. First Pitch is not okay. talking about the time let, we took let, up. Let me, let me tell you why. It's not your fault. I'm not blaming y'all for this. I'm just saying y'all took up 12 minutes of my life that I can't get back. Because let me tell you something right now. The Chicago Bears are trash. Let's just call it what it is. They're not a good organization, okay? You really breaking it down. Look at me when I'm talking to you right now. He's doing his you little notes. There, you he's sitting doing up there taking notes on the Chicago <laughs> Bears. Why don't you just call them the bad news bears? It's, it's a damn shame they represent the city of Chicago. They stink. Okay?